Good morning, it's May 8th, and today I just wanted to make an observation kind of uh, tying together the three major passages that we're looking at. Uh, first, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 2 through 4, and we see the story of Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli the priest, and their utter wickedness, and the fact that uh, eventually Samuel is going to be replacing them, and that actually does happen here with the two of them um, are slaughtered in battle, and then Eli falls over at hearing it, and and he dies as well. And so there's a, the end, really, of that um, that stage of God's relationship with Israel. And now we're going to head into that prophetic stage with, um, with Samuel being the first of those major prophets to anoint the kings of Israel. And so you've got a, a pretty um, stark illustration of wickedness. Uh, those who are in power of uh, places of power in terms of spiritual influence, um, office at least, um, are wicked to the core and uh, are being judged for that. And then we get into John in chapter 5, and the Pharisees are um, talking with Jesus, and Jesus is explaining to them uh, some very important truths for them. He says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, uh, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to life, to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. So there's only two paths that are possible. Uh, the way that leads to death and destruction, the way that is wickedness, the way that is maybe externally righteous, but internally is corrupt. And that's what's happening with the Pharisees. That's what happened with Hophni and Phinehas. And then Psalm 106, I think, is interesting because it actually shows that despite our wickedness, despite our choosing the wrong direction, God still chooses to save some, and he pulls them out of that. Um let's go to verse 6. We have sinned even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember that many, uh, your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the uh, by the sea, the, re the Red Sea. And then verse 8. Yet he saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. And so even even though we are all on that way to death and destruction through our wickedness, God chooses to reveal himself to some and to pull them out of that. And so it is by grace that we are saved through faith and not a work that we have done. And that's illustrated throughout scripture. Um, God is the one who chooses and brings redemption. There's no other way off of that path of destruction.